Hello, my name is Cody Savage and I'll be presenting this week's case of the week on the hot quadrate sign. A 41-year-old woman with a past medical history of end-stage renal disease presents to the emergency department with a new right lower extremity pain. Upon questioning, the patient also endorses the history of shortness of breath, chest pain, and swelling in her upper extremities and chest that has been present for several months. She denies fever or abdominal pain. An axial slice from the contrast enhanced CT image to the abdomen and the arterial phase shows a focal wedge-shaped enhancement of segment 4 of the liver, labeled here with the yellow arrow. In addition, multiple collateral vessels can be visualized by the blue arrow. On the left, you can see a transverse color Doppler ultrasound image of the right upper extremity, which shows reversal of blood flow in the right brachial vein. On the right, we have a long axis color Doppler ultrasound of the left upper extremity, which shows reversal of blood flow through the subclavian vein. Coronal reformat from a contrast enhanced CT of the chest in the venous phase demonstrates occlusion of the severian vena cava along the inferior aspect of the previously placed stent, as demonstrated by the white arrow. The final diagnosis is severe vena cava thrombosis with the hot quadrate sign. Supporting evidence included contrast enhanced CT which demonstrated enhancement of the quadrate lobe with multiple collateral vessels consistent with severe vena cava syndrome. Ultrasound demonstrated reverse flow in the right brachial and basilic veins. In addition, the left upper extremity demonstrated reverse flow in the patent internal jugular and subclavian veins. Contrast enhanced CT of the chest also demonstrated superior vena cava occlusion with collateral vessels. Top differential diagnoses include the hot caudate sign, thoracic outlet syndrome, and hepatocellular carcinoma. The hot caudate sign, seen in Bud Chiari syndrome, can manifest with the hot spot sign with enhancement within the caudate lobe as opposed to the quadrate lobe. Thoracic outlet syndrome can be divided into three categories, arterial, venous, and neurogenic. Arterial and venous thoracic outlet syndrome can be ruled out as a CT of the chest reveals superior vena cava occlusion rather than some clavian artery vein abnormalities. Neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome requires neurological symptoms which are not present in this patient. Hepatocellular carcinoma can manifest with similar focal wedge-shaped enhancement on contrast enhanced CT of the liver that, unlike the hot quadrate sign, washes out rapidly in more delayed phases. Take home message. The hot quadrate sign is the result of increased pressure from the obstructed superior vena cava causing portosystemic venous shunting between the superior vena cava and the left portal vein via the internal mammary and the periumbilical veins along the ligamentum teres. Superior vena cava obstruction can occur acutely or chronically with the most common etiologies being thrombus formation or compression from tumor infiltration. Presenting symptoms include bilateral face and neck swelling, distended neck veins, dyspnea, and upper extremity swelling. Patients may also have a cyanotic appearance of the skin. Identification of the hot quadrate sign should prompt cross-sectional imaging of the chest. The hot quadrate sign manifests on contrast enhanced CT or MRI of the abdomen as a characteristic focal wedge-shaped enhancement of segment 4 during the arterial venous phases. The prognosis and treatment guidelines for superior vena cava occlusion differ based on the underlying etiology and the acuity of the occlusion. Thank you for allowing us to present our work.